Hi, welcome to the Doctor Who Show. I'm your host, Nick Cicero. Today's guest is Dr. Afan Akhtar, a board certified podiatric surgeon who's been practicing throughout New Jersey for more than 10 years. He's a skilled surgeon and an all around great guy. Please welcome Dr. Afan Akhtar. Dr. Akhtar, thanks for doing the show. Thank you. So where'd you grow up? London. London? London is in the United Kingdom. Wow. How was that? I loved it. I was there for my first 20 years of my life, and then I moved here. So were you on one of a cobblestone street in a brick kind of old school, you know, tell me about it. Like, where did you live? That precisely. Really? Yep. I lived in I lived in central London. Um, it wasn't a cobbled street, but the vicinity had more than enough cobbled street to, to make you happy if you like that. So wasn't you didn't have a backyard then? Oh no, actually you did. You did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't the prettiest backyard. So my father's interpretation of a backyard was to brick everything over. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not cutting grass. Cutting grass. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which which allowed me to, to play a lot of my uh, sports that I've always. Uh, um, fascinated with and, and enjoy. Yeah, so as a kid, did you have any siblings? I had two older brothers and one younger sister. Okay. Were you in that house the whole time? For the, my, yeah, my entire 20 years while I was living in the UK, yes. What did your parents do? My father was a general physician. He actually had one practice just below the house, just like the notorious Cosby show. Um, yeah. And then he also had another office um, a good mile and a half away. Okay, so you hung the shingle right off the house. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's great. And your mom? My mother was the practice manager. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So between patients, she would uh, make sure I was getting my meals, and, my, uh, and make sure I was doing my homework. Kind of thing. Yeah, so you had doctors in your family growing up. Yeah. Were you the only one out of the three of you that became a doctor? I was the oldest of the four of us that um, went into medicine, then my, f my sister followed suit as well. Yeah, and what does she practice? She practices allergy. Okay. Allergy and, uh, and, uh, and internal medicine. Right. Was there a lot of fights growing up in that house? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, older, two older brothers and one younger sister. That's what, that's, what, that's what siblings do, right? Did you share, uh, did you all have your own bedrooms or did you share a room? Like I shared a room. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I um, initially it was it was with my sister, because my two older brothers were, were five years north of me, oh, okay. um, and uh, my sister and I were a little bit closer uh, in age, so we shared rooms initially until until my parents kicked them out and moved them to the States, and I took over their their domain. So then you felt like you had a palatial place. Yeah, absolutely. After I did. that, <laughs> you didn't have anybody to share anything with. No, not at all. I had my own kitchen, in fact. And did you walk to school? Did you get bus to school? How did that work? Yeah, I, uh, no, it was definitely too much of a walk. I, I took a bus, a public bus. All right. And did, was it? How does it work in in England? Did they do they? Um, is it by zip code, like where you live, like it is here, or like, you know, if you're in this part of the county, you go to this school. If you're like, in this part of the county, you go to this school. On the, on the most part, yes. Um, I lived in central London, and it, it covered a lot of bases, and there's a lot of what you call zip codes, you call them postal codes, um, but yeah, you're supposed to be mandated to a particular um, area. Um, but things happened, and uh, I actually ended up going to somewhere a little bit further away. Um, it was it was for better schooling purposes, and I was able to be able to get away with it. It was a, I'm, I was glad I was I made that extra hour, um, half hour every morning, half hour back to go to a school like that. Your parents, I guess they did, but I'm going to ask anyway. Did they emphasize good grades and? In school was that number one on their list? That's Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Could you not do anything else unless your homework was done and your grades are good? No, they didn't. They didn't need to emphasize it. They just reminded me of it. Um, but they, yeah. but even that didn't need to happen because I just I, I felt like that was what needed to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Kid, would you sneak down into your dad's office and watch him handle patients or check out a you know sit behind the scenes? No, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I I definitely assisted when I could. Yeah. Um, worked work behind the desk at the reception. I pretended to be a doctor on occasion when I was about seven. <laughs> uh, <but yeah. laughs> that must have been awesome. I mean, you get a, you know, most people that try to be a doctor, if they don't have parents or siblings or any relatives that are in it, they have to wait, and then they have to wait to really like get into school and and experience different parts of medicine. But you, as a seven-year-old, you were right there in the thick of thick of it. Yeah, including all the um, 
uh, after work um, social engagements with other doctors and so forth. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You're just hanging out with the other, the other yeah. doctors, children, and yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a very enjoyable experience, and, and that's what possessed me, or not, possessed is probably not the appropriate word, but um, pushed me, <laughs> right. pushed me towards uh, the field. Push your your other sibling, well, other than your sister, did it push your other siblings away from it? Like they were like, I don't want to be a doctor. Yeah. Anything it, but. Yeah, it it, 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 it's 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 hard to um, it's hard to put into into words why I decided to go into it and they didn't. So my brothers were completely in a, in a, in a different world. Uh, they grew up in a, um, in a rough environment. They went to rough schools. So I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to explain that. Yeah, I understand. So the, your brothers went to, didn't go through the same school systems that you did? No, they went to a different school. Okay, and you think that's what helped you go into medicine and them not go into medicine? Yeah? Yeah. All right, all right, cool. So what, what, what was the, best thing you remember about growing up in England? What was your favorite thing to do? What was the thing that you you know your kids won't have here that they that you had there? It's not one thing, it's multiple things. Okay, talk more about that. It's the it's the, 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 the dialogue, the banter that you have um, with people. It's the it's the, the music, it's the it's the clothing, it's the it's the food. Um, there's a misconception that so it's culture. Yeah, it would be a, a Absolutely. short answer. Would be culture would be yeah, and that and the fact that um, maybe they're, they're in a slightly different environment in the sense that they're, li they're knowing that they live in New Jersey and, and it's pretty suburban like. Yeah. Um, especially when you you relate it to New York City or, or London, um, it's that idea or that way of growing up is different. I grew up in inner city London, which is the equivalent of say downtown New York. So, back to England. You're 14 year old kid, uh, are you in high school at 14? Secondary school. How does that work? It's, uh, it's the equivalent of high school. Okay, so yeah, you're in high school. You're probably, what, a sophomore, second year in, in the school? It was 14, I was probably a, what they refer to as a third grader. Okay, which is weird because here in the States, a third grader is like what? Yeah, oh no, correction, third year. Oh, third year, okay. Third year. All right, so are you playing any sports? Currently? No. When 14. You, at 14? Plenty of sports. What are you playing? Interestingly, I played field hockey. Okay. Field hockey around the rest of the world, unlike the States, is predominantly, yeah, uh, actually, no, I won't say predominantly male, it's, it's, it's uh, equally male and female game. Um, okay. That's why it's played in the Olympics. And, oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I thought field hockey was, because in the States it's just predominantly women, female, right? correct, yeah. yeah. So in, in, uh, in the rest of the world, it's a, it's a huge game. Argentina plays it and, and does well at it. Australia, New Zealand, Pakistan, um, Brazil, it, 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 Holland, Great Britain. You can do some damage with that stick. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's you, a very fast You wear shin game. pads, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, you could whack somebody pretty hard. Yeah, absolutely. And what else? What else did you play? Uh, my, my big passions were football, soccer, okay. um, cricket, that's probably my favorite, and squash. Okay. Along with tennis. Yeah. But yeah, but uh, they're just those, those games, and, and those are the, uh, one of the reasons why um, I'm, I'm fascinated still with the UK, because those, those games I grew up with, and those games I, I still follow to the day. Are they televised? In, uh, in oh the yeah, of course. Yeah. So there's professional leagues Absolutely. for all those sports. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Oh wow. So you'll have teams. And it, is it? Is, I mean, just because I don't know. Are this like what's the seasons for each sport? Do they run the Cr same? Cricket or? will be the equivalent of baseball, so it's a summer game. Oh, okay. Um, football, obviously, is, um, unlike soccer here, football is, uh, is typically a winter sport, just like American football here. Okay. Um, squash, obviously, is all year round because it's indoors. And, and field hockey, yeah, obviously it would be an, it's an outdoor sport, so it will be a summer, typically a summer game. Out of those sports, what was your favorite? Football? Cricket. Oh, cricket? Yes. So, you know, I've had someone, someone that I know very closely, explain mm. cricket to me, mm. and it was, I don't think I grasped it right off the bat, but you can literally play that game for, what, a day? 
It's actually it can go into the next day. Uh, yes. The same game. Yeah. Well, traditionally, Match. traditionally yes, but now there's two formats of the game that are beyond the five day game. That you're referring to. Okay. So the, a typical test match between international nations is, uh, is five days, it can, uh, but uh, the good majority of the game is actually end in three. Um, but it can go up to five days. But there's two new newer formats. One of them has been around for 20 to 30 years, and that's called the one-day game. And that's 50 overs per side. And now there's an even quicker version called 2020, which is 20 overs per side. So uh, per side, sorry. Uh, and so yeah, it's much much quicker a version of the game much more rash yeah. and uh, much, it's much, much quicker in action. Well that's been, you know, with the way society has been going, how things get very quick nowadays, mm. baseball's having that problem, they're trying to figure out how, how to make the game less than four hours, Yeah. because um, people are tuning out, right? Um, you know, they're, they're doing things with pitch counts for them, so that the pitchers have to do it quicker, and they're, they're looking uh, at different rules every year of how to make the game shorter. Yeah. You know, like a basketball game is pretty good. It's two hours, you're done, you're out the door. A hockey game's two hours, you're and done. That two hour basketball game is actually in an hour and fifty five minutes for them, um, in the last five minutes, right? Yeah. Look at the timeouts, but uh, correct. And when it yeah. comes when it comes to um, um, cricket, uh, you can you can arguably call me old, um, preferring the the, 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 the longer version of the game. Yeah. But I prefer to call myself a traditionalist. That's, yeah. I just I love that format of the game because it's much more of a of a chess match. Um, and, and it's much more based on skill as opposed to, to, to luck. Um, in that shorter format of the game, people are just smacking the ball. One day you could be extremely lucky, the other day not so much. Do you think that it's the same thing like it is in the States? They're, they made that shorter game because they, were, they want uh, more viewers, more ratings, and they want the younger crowd to watch it? Do you well, think that, is that why they did it? Well, that was the reason for 2020. I'm yeah. sure it's a uh, very similar reasons for why they're doing it here as well. Yeah, golf was lo golf in the in the states and in Europe um, were losing a lot of interest uh, because of the four. Uh, and I don't mean interest for viewers. Uh, this I'm talking interest of people playing. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's up to the younger generation, right, to take up the game so that in 20 years the next group of stars are playing professionally. So are you, are you implying that the next generation will stop watching mini golf instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they might have to. Yeah. I mean, but they, they, they now, if you watch the, the, the golf association, uh, they put out commercials for Play 9. That's their new slogan, to get kids to play, mm -hmm. Play 9. Just play 9 holes instead of 18, because instead of four and a half hours, you're out in two. Yeah. Because they're trying to get new kids to go. Do, do you see, like, with the professional leagues in cricket, um, are they marketing towards kids that way for the 2020 to get more people interested? Mm -hmm. they, they are. That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. What do you, how do you watch it? Or do you, can you get cable channels on it that have it? Well, when I first, when I first came to the, to the States in the, in the mid 90s, it was very difficult. Um, in fact, I had, to, I had to rely on um, newspaper feeds that were sent about two weeks after the match had finished. Oh, wow. Um, but, uh, but then, uh, yeah, so the advent of obviously yeah. the internet, everything is accessible. So I can watch a live game on my uh, iWatch if I had an iWatch. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's good. You know what I've noticed? I have um, friends in Brooklyn and I, I'd go see them on the weekends. And I, so for the last 20 years, I've been driving the same route past this baseball field. Mm. And, you know, if it's on a Saturday morning, I never see any kids playing baseball. But now, over the last eight years, there's a cricket league. Yeah. And they're packing that baseball field every Saturday morning. And I'm like, huh. it's starting to get, you know, popular or, or more and more people are moving to the States and, and taking up the game. Do you, do you feel that way? Do you feel like there's a lot of, there's starting to be a, more of a buzz for it in the States? Well, again, it depends on, on, on your circle. I, because I'm very familiar with cricket and, and, and know people that, that like it, um, I've always seen it, to be honest with you. Um, I, I know of existing leagues that have been going on for, for a while. In fact, one of my, um, uh, one of the, um, one of my f framed pictures in my office is of Patterson Cricket Club, f um, formed in, in the 1800s. Um, and there's, a, there's a photograph of a, a number of yeah, people in, in whites, in traditional cricket whites, um, outside um, a, a, a big, large uh, building called Patterson Cricket Club. So it's, I know it's been around for, for a while, and since I've been over here, I'm, I'm fully aware of, of the expats from the West Indies and, and South Asia uh, playing cricket in Brooklyn and, and the parks of Central yeah. Jersey. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just wild to see. I mean, because they literally had two, three hundred people there. Should I tell you an interesting fact? Yes. So Please. the very, very first international cricket match was played by Canada versus the United States. Where? Probably in North America somewhere. Oh. But that was the very first international cricket match. So cricket's been in North America for a good while. Hmm. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. And there's, a, there's also a, 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 a team that exists in uh, Compton. Compton, Los Angeles. A so, like cricket team? A cricket team. Wow. To, uh, basically, to, uh, it was initially formed, uh, formed because it was they felt it was a game that was uh, sort of discipline, um, especially for the people that were up to no good. Um, so, yeah, they've actually got a cricket team that's been there for at least a decade or two. Do they have any tournaments like um, the Olympics or who would have everybody from all different countries get teams and? Yeah, so yeah, very similar to the, the football World Cup, soccer World Cup, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. uh, so every every two years, there's a major tournament of some sort. Oh, okay. um, and so in the 50 over format of the game, there's a World Cup every four years. Um, there's also a Champions Trophy, which I think is two every two years, if not every four years as well. Um, and so yes, yeah, so there's constant matches going on, and literally um, because of the fact that it's played worldwide, you've got Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. There's always there's always cricket season. So cricket season in any particular country would be during summer months. So winter in the UK would be summer in Australia, so there's always games being played throughout the year. Oh, understood. All right, so you're finishing up high school, you're playing a lot of sports, you're doing good, your grades are great. Um, now you decide you're gonna go off to college. Yes. Right, do they call it college? Yeah. All right, so you're going off to college. Or university. Uni. University, yeah. So do you decide right away you're gonna be a doctor? Do you know before you graduate high school that you're gonna, you're gonna go and do medicine? It was most uh, most likely leading towards that direction. There wasn't a um, there wasn't a space station in the UK, and so I had no other choice for right. me. Right. Um, medicine was most likely where I was going to go. And did you start um, college there? I did. So it's a this slightly different format. I did go to college, um, and but the premise of college was two years before you start university. Oh, okay. So it sounds a little bit odd, but that's basically the the, the, the format. Oh, sure. Um, and so. Um, I applied to uh, dental school uh, and I got accepted not in London where I was living but in Wales oh, okay um, and at that point I had to make a decision so London to Wales as far as distance is like give me a state to state or so we're going from one side of the UK to the other okay so oh, wow. it was, a, it was a, po a polar extreme yeah polar extreme in, in many ways geographically but also leaving even family. even culturally to some to some degree but also yes you're correct leaving leaving family um, and that was my biggest reason why I decided not to follow suit and, and decided to come to the States instead my, my, my thought process was if I'm leaving um, my home I might as well go to another location other than Wales where I could at least be amongst my other family members and my brothers are already were living in the States so I decided that's that's what I'll do where were they living in uh, central New Jersey at the time okay all right, so you you decided to come to the states and go to school. You had a do you apply there, like for do you start like looking at colleges right away in the states, like trying to pick out where you want to go? Yeah, so I think it was a uh, February um, of a particular year that I that I came, and so I had a, f a few months. Um, I was able to apply to a few different colleges, and uh, and uh, everywhere I I applied, I, I essentially got accepted. Um, and for, for good reason, I decided to stay in New Jersey. Okay, and you went to where? Initially, Stevens Institute of Technology, an engineering wow. school for pre-med. Right, mm -hmm. wow, Stevens is great. Yeah, it is. Very good school. It is and was, yeah. Wow, and then you went from Stevens to where? Uh, New York College of Podiatric Medicine. Where is that? That's in northern Manhattan or uh, southern Harlem. So you went from New Jersey to New York. Did you stay there or did you commute? Were you a commuter? Bridge and tunnel? Person? I actually did a bit of both. I wanted to experience uh, um, living in, in a dormitory type of environment um, for, for medical school. Right. Uh, but um, ultimately I, I moved back home with creature comforts of laundry being done and food and family. Yeah. Yeah, you need that support when you're going. Yeah. That. If you um, had to choose London or New York, which one do you like to live in? Which one would you like to live in? <laughs> Excellent question. Um, 
they're equivalent, and the, the, uh, probably the biggest reason. You're not why, the first person to say that. Yeah, probably yeah. the biggest reason why I am where I am is because of because of the, the, the similarities. Um, I decided not to move anywhere else in the country but New York for, for a few reasons. One, yeah. because it had the similar, if not the same pace, as what we had in London. Um, but the other advantage of being in New York is that it's on the eastern coast, and it's a very quick flight to, to London. Mm -hmm. If I if I'm missing or craving certain foods. Oh, that's awesome. Speaking of foods, mm. so there's this, uh, someone keeps telling me that the best fish and chips in the world is over where you used to live. Is that true, or is there any place in the city that will rival a good, proper fish and chip? Well, there's actually a very good chippy, as we call it, um, in in a downtown Manhattan near St. Vincent's Hospital, uh, Greenwich Avenue to be precise, it's a place called Salt and Battery, so highly suggested. So is it, is it a sit-down meal kind of place, or just a to-go kind of place? Sit, uh, sit down on bar stools, yep. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. And, it's, and it's totally worth it. And that is the equivalent of back home? It actually is. The, everyone who, the, 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 the people that own the, the, the facility and the people that function that facility are, are expats from the UK. All right, and we're back with Dr. Akhtar. So you decide, you finish your undergrad, and you decide to go to um, podiatric medicine. Where do you go? Interesting question. I, um, it was at that time where I was trying to make a decision uh, of what field I wanted to go into. Um, and I got accepted into two different uh, disciplines of medicine. One was a uh, dental school uh, in California, or two, uh, podiatric medicine in New York City and I trumped for pediatric medicine in New York City. In New York City. You're, like, you're thinking to yourself, 364 days of sun in California, yeah. or, or New York seasons. City, or different seasons in New York City. Correct. Yeah, and coming from your background in England, you're like, let's go. That and the fact that uh, I thought podiatry was much more suited to, uh, to my, my design. My let's talk it. about that. What made you, your dad was an internal med, right? Yeah. So what made you go into um, podiatric medicine, was it the surgery part? Was it, what was it? Uh, multiple reasons. So um, I needed to find a good fit. I thought the dentistry was was my, uh, what's the word, my... Calling? My calling. Okay. Uh, but I worked as a, I worked as a, again, not to put down in any profession, because every profession is brilliant, um, but there, need, there needs to be something for some, for some people. And so for me, dentistry, um, allowed me to make use of my hands. I wanted to have a feel that it could allow me to use um, have my hand have hand dexterity, um, but I wanted to have two way conversations as well. And unlike dentistry, but I actually offered me that. Right. Um, and but I also love sports, and so I wanted to have a discipline that would allow me to uh, to keep close and give me an excuse to talk about sports as well and, and manage patients who had uh, sports related um, injuries and so forth. So that was another huge uh, reason why. For me, podiatry was the way to go. So, dexterity, the, 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 the dialogue um, um, between a patient and myself, um, the avenue of or allowing me to um, treat sports medicine. But another major uh, part was I, I wanted to treat all individuals, regardless of gender or age. And, and this profession allows me to do that. So, you start your rotation in, the, in medical school, right? So, you go through. Um, take me through it. What do you what do you start out with first? Is it just all books, and then it goes to picking a? Take me through it. It's it's, it's essentially the same principle as any in medical school. So the first typically the first two years is academic, okay, um, and little to no um, what I want to want with a with a with a patient based scenario or clinical setting. So it's all academic, um, and uh, for me personally, that was that was. Boring part, but it's a part that needed to be done. You need to get your fundamentals down. Uh, but then, where where it really kickstarted for me, where I really started enjoying uh, what I was doing, is when when we first started seeing uh, patients. And uh, very interestingly, my very first rotation ended up being my favorite rotation. Why is that? And that was pediatric. Oh, okay. pediatrics. So um, so since then, I've just had this um, liking towards seeing younger younger patients. And I so I see patients of all creed, uh, but uh, I'm one of those few that I know personally know that really enjoy treating and managing uh, children's. Uh, Do children bounce back quicker? Um, yeah, for, 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 for certain things, absolutely, yes. 
um, but it's just I just love being around a, a, a younger element um, but uh, they're also all playing sports and, and I can have them relate to it because I did the same thing growing up I used to play football soccer <laughs> four times a day every day while I was in school growing up in England um, and so I just I love sports and so knowing that a lot of these children do come in uh, presenting with um, activity-based injuries and, uh, of some sort um, I'm able to explain to them that I've gone through it as well and we'll, we'll get through it together and, and that type of that type of thing. So when you figured when you started seeing these younger patients that's when you felt your calling like you felt it was this is this is my home this is where I need to be. 100%. Yeah and then so do you do rotations in um, all different aspect, as, uh, aspects of it for the next two years? Yes. Yeah, so for everything from, like I said, pediatrics to, to vascular, uh, to plastics even, um, ortho, dermatology, rheumatology, neurology, endocrinology, wow. internal medicine, emergency medicine, it goes on. How is the ER round? Very, very, uh, for me, yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, you never see the same thing twice, I'm sure. Uh, fun, but at the same time, uh, disturbing, based on the situation. Obviously, sure. uh, you, f you feel for them, but uh, f fun in the sense that it allows you to just learn very quickly. Yeah. Um, and so, I felt that to be a very powerful uh, rotation. Does it help you focus when you're under the gun like that? Yeah, you're forced to. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing you have to. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, you finished um, medical school, then where'd you go? So, at the behest of um, my partner, my uh, fiance at the time, uh, I felt I wanted to get. My felt that my calling was also to to reach uh, to, to to go further out um, and leave the New York um, area um, and go to New England uh, for for many reasons. And I just I knew a few people there, and from an academic perspective, and to to get the most of uh, of what I needed. Uh, for the next two years of training, I felt that the place for me would be in New England, between Boston Med and Brown University, and that and that and that vicinity. Um, I decided to go to New England, and that's your residence. I did that. Yep, yeah, residency for just over three years. Well, let's. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, your significant other. Mm. So you're you're married. Yes. Uh, any kids? Three kids. Where did you meet your wife? In college, in Stevens, in fact. Oh wow. Yeah. That you did through the through the through heavy studying and trying to get through all these tests in schools, you kept the relationship and then went to medical school and still dated. So, in one perspective, you could say we been we were courting for a, a good amount of time. Yeah. On the other way, on the, on the another aspect, you can just say that we were just friends, um, and I would just and so uh, I'd rather leave it at that. Yeah. Was that. she in medical school as well? Yes. So she went to, uh, she had an opportunity similar to mine where it was cross discipline. Um, she got accepted in dental school, correction. She got accepted into uh, DO, MD, and podiatry. Okay, and then did you start dating after, like uh, exclusively after you both finished all your residencies? We got, we probably got most serious immediately after I finished residency and came back to New Jersey. And that's when we said, yeah, "This is, it's time, uh, and it's time for, for each of us." And and how did you propose when you finally said, "This is the one I want to marry"? How did you do it? So I'm not sure if I really want to answer that question um, because <laughs> because I did it the way I wanted to do it, um, and, well, okay. and, and the way I wanted to do it was to be non-conforming um, okay. and, and not to make it an elaborate affair. And I just, just simply. Said, Listen, I've heard some wild stories. You cannot shock. No, there's nothing. That's 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 the thing. There's there's no shock value at all in how I proposed. It was the most plain Jane, simple process of. Do you want to get married? Um, and this was uh, while I was in my driving. Uh, in, while I was in the driver's side of a of a, of a vehicle. Were you um, going somewhere? Yeah, I was on my way home. Did you? It wasn't preordained. It wasn't pre-planned. Did you have a ring? I did have a ring. In the pocket? Uh, yes. So you were planning on doing it. Yes, but not but there wasn't any there wasn't any distinct plan. It wasn't a, it wasn't it wasn't a, a You were just going with the flow. Yeah, exactly. And when the moment struck, that's when you were gonna pull the ring out. So yeah. were you driving or were you in the passenger car? 
Pat, were you the driver or passenger? I was, uh, I was the driver. You were the driver, okay. I was, I, was, uh, I should remember all the details, um, so I'll, if, I, if I sound very confident in my, <laughs> in my, in my um, response, it's because, because I have to. But the reality, <laughs> but the, the, the reality was, is I was probably dropping her off um, back to her uh, dorm, uh, dorm or, or, some, or her housing at the time. Um, and uh, just before she was uh, popping out, I wanted to surprise her while she was in the midst of opening a car door. Well, typically, if you, I've got colleagues of mine or friends of mine who propose in very elaborate places. Right. I think the, one of my, a very close friend of mine, plan was to propose on the Eiffel Tower. Oh, wow. He got to the Eiffel Tower and decided this is not for him, this is not the place to do it. Came out of the Eiffel Tower, still undecided as to how and when, and they decided to take a train ride, and that train ride was to um, Geneva and Zurich. And right there, at Lake Geneva, he decided to, to, to propose. Very nice. It was, there, there was the whole, obviously, if I elaborate on the story, it's, it was very nice. Yeah. And, and almost... Um, but it was his right moment. Yeah, it was his right moment, yeah. and almost the, 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 almost the traditional or typical way of, of proposing. I wanted to do it a little bit uh, off, uh, off kilter, uh, without any expectations. I'm guessing if, if she was on her way to Paris and then to Geneva, she was hoping that the, the, uh, the, uh, the proposal would come. In this particular scenario, it was... Uh, this Your is, single from another had no idea it was coming. No, not at all. Not one, right? Yeah. No. Wow. So you, you, you said, let's get married. Yes. As she was opening the door? Yeah. And did she, like, do a double take at you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> then you pulled it out? And then I pulled it out. And she was like... Crying? Was she shocked? Did she, did she think you were joking when you first said it as she was getting out of the car? Yeah, she uh, she, uh, she she wanted to know if I was genuinely serious because it wasn't it wasn't what she was expecting. She was probably sure. expecting this bouquet of flowers in a very fancy restaurant um, uh, in Moscow somewhere or something <laughs> along those lines. But it but it wasn't. Uh, uh, I guess for some other people it might be exotic. It was in a it was in a it was in in, in New York City. Wow, well, that's cheap. But on a hundredth and uh, and Broadway to be precise. Well, see, at least you remember. <laughs> you know all the you know all the details you needed to know. So then, how long was the engagement? That was uh, about a year and a half. So was that after residency? Or? After residency. After residency, you got so, back. Yeah, we were, we both started. Were practice. you thinking of settling in, in up in New England? No, not at, at all. all. I, I, the, the whole intention was to do um, uh, training. Uh, but the, the, the agenda and the premise from the very beginning was to uh, to come back to come back home. That's where my parents were, my, my siblings were. So it was it was it was it was, it was a necessity. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have kids, right? Yes. How many? Three. And their names? Zidane. He's my uh, sole or only son, um, and he's my uh, he's my middle child. Okay. Um, I have two daughters. The first one is Rafa. And my my youngest child, Yesena, who's three years old, is a is a Yesena. Yeah. So did you decide to have kids right away, or did you guys want to wait a little while and travel around? What was your thought process on that? There wasn't much of a thought process. <laughs> what is we gonna have kids? Yeah. No. And uh, yeah, we it was we, we we weren't planning anything. It just whatever happens happens, and that's. How I like to live my life. Yeah, well, it definitely goes with how you got, how you did the proposal, how you got married. You know, even even your career. Yeah. And if, you, if you didn't feel it in your your gut, yes. you didn't go that way. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's done well for you, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So then, when you got into uh, New Jersey and you put your shingle up, it wasn't in your house, was it? Shingle? The when like your dad put his shingle up in the house, he had his office in your in the bottom of your house. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you did when you finally opened up your office, it wasn't in your house, right? Absolutely not. Where'd you open your first office? Um, actually, I joined a practice in Central New Jersey. It was okay. a little bit of a, a, a commute, uh, but uh, I, it was a it was a chemistry. Interviewed with a, a number of locations. And it just felt right at a, a certain at a, at a certain location, and for me, the the commute was was worth was worth the hassle. Okay, and you were doing mostly sports and kids and yeah, or a little bit of everything. Yeah, a, a bit of everything. I like to just pride myself on just doing and uh, everything. Okay, and then how long did you stay there? 
Um, I was there for approximately seven to eight years. Oh, you were there for a long time. Yeah, a good amount of time. And then you decided, no, you were living, where were you living at the time? Still living in North Jersey, where, where I live today, in the same, oh, the very same house. Oh, all right. Yeah, so I haven't, I haven't moved for a good solid, nearly 15, 15 to 16 years now. Oh, okay. And you, uh, do you plan on moving, or you're good? I love where I live. So you're not going anywhere? No. So tell me about the new office you opened up. So, um, my, as, as we've discussed, we've got three very young children. So the idea is to make it in a, uh, to, uh, to make an office in their proximity, just for, for whatever reason, um, uh, in case something is, is needed. So um, I'm in in the um, town of Fort Lee, which is very very close, obviously to to New York City, um, and, and strategic. I think is a very good location. We get the, there's a lot of patients that reside in New Jersey but live in New York City. Um, based on logistics and timing, um, a lot of patients who work in the city find it very difficult to get to, uh, to, to any New Jersey office. So I just thought being in Fort Lee would be a strategic place for a lot of my patients who find it difficult to, to see me in my, uh, my other New Jersey office, which is in Wayne. And it makes traffic for you getting to your office pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, I'm in that uh, in that vicinity. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty, pretty sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And what's the name of it? The the my practice is called Optimal Ankle and Foot. Okay. Um, do you have a website? Yes. What is it? Optimalankle.com. All right. Good. So at Optimal Ankle and Foot, um, what? patients are going to start coming through your doors? What kind of conditions will you serve? The, the beauty behind my field um, and, and the way I practice is that I'm accepting of all, uh, all genders, both genders um, and all ages. Um, and so regardless of what it is, as long as it's in the lower extremity, um, we'll manage and take care of that. Whether it's dermatological, whether it's neurological, whether it's, whether it's orthopedic, whether it's dermatological, we'll manage. So that's, that's a good point. So with skin conditions mm. uh, brought on by maybe diabetes or things like that, or wounds, they'll come to you. Absolutely, yes. And then for if someone breaks an ankle or dislocates something or uh, hurts a toe, you know, like I do every morning and I stub it on the, on the kitchen table and I, I crack something, you're, you're going to take care of it. Exactly. What are some of the surgeries you like to do, the ones that really get you going? I actually, uh, I enjoy surgery a lot, um, uh, but what I, what I tell my patients all the time is that um, I'm not going to do surgery for the sake of it. It's conservative management is always the, the mainstay, um, and surgery being the last resort. And I also like to emphasize that it's not a worst case scenario, it just happens to be the last case scenario. Uh, but in reference to surgery, um, I really like getting um, active indiv individuals back in their feet um, uh, as quick as possible. Um, and so whether it's an ankle fracture, um, ankle sprain reconstruction, flat foot reconstruction, um, or even cosmesis. I just, I, I just, it, for me, um, it's just the, the whole principle for me and the whole goal for me is to get my patients back in their feet as quick as possible. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered your c uh, question exactly. No, you did, but you answered it very well. I always ask my guests to tell me, if you had to highlight one surgery that separates you from your peers, what would it be and why? Good question. There's actually a, f a few different things that I like to do um, that you can arguably call surgery, but I prefer to call them procedures. Um, and so there's a so between conservative treatment and surgery, there are at least three different things that I that like to do to consider getting a patient to at least get some uh, relief. One of them is shockwave therapy. One of them is uh, platelet-rich plasma um, injections. Another one is a, a, a minimally invasive procedure called Tenex which is the, the, almost the closest thing you're gonna to get to a, a, a magic wand. Really? So it's, it's a tiny little incision. Um, um, and basically, is this done in an office? This is done typically, I prefer to do it in, a, in an OR setting, in, a, in a, um, sorry, an operating room setting. Okay. Uh, just to be clean. Um, but it's a, another way of describing it, arguably, is a, a glorified injection, because the incision is so small, that in most, part, in most cases, it doesn't require a stitch. Oh, wow. Um, um, and so the idea is to pulverize um, and get rid of inflammatory tissue, which hopefully get you back in your feet uh, a lot quicker. But 
something that I really enjoy doing, not necessarily in the sense of doing the actual surgery itself, which is uh, not too involved, but uh, in terms of patient satisfaction, is uh, ligament reconstruction for ankle sprains. Uh, I'm not sure if you know this, but one of the most common reasons why individuals end up in an emergency room is because of an ankle sprain. Um, and very often it's just referred to as, an, oh, it's just an ankle sprain. Very common uh, terminology used by nurses, doctors, and patients alike in this. And I, and I genuinely feel it's the wrong terminology because there's actually three uh, uh, grades. There's grade one, two, and three. Grade one being uh, your generic ankle sprain that everyone typically has had, right? Yeah. Um, especially if you play sports. Yeah. Uh, your grade two is when you have a partial tear of that ligament. And at three is when there's a complete rupture. But in reality, because ligament tears are not seen on an x-ray, it's referred to as just an ankle sprain. And what that basically leads to, especially if it's a grade two or, or, or a grade three ankle sprain, is that that patient is more predisposed to getting further ankle sprains as, as the months and years go by. And each ankle sprain makes an ankle even weaker inherently. So if that's diagnosed um, early enough, my take home message to certain individuals based on their lifestyle is to strongly consider um, strengthening it with appropriate physical therapy and bracing. Uh, but if they're a, a, a good candidate or if they fail conservative treatment, to actually proceed and get uh, ankle ligament reconstruction, it is very uh, important to prevent longer and bigger issues. Um, and those bigger issues I can go on for another few minutes. Sure, sure. But the reality is you want to avoid that from happening. And the procedure itself is actually quite small. Um, you're just repairing the, 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 the minute tears that you may have. And, in, um, and by following the post-op protocol, which is um, a bracing initially and then followed by physical therapy, um, you'll be able to get back on your feet and inherently have a, an ankle uh, structure that's a lot stronger than it was than arguably prior to any tear in the first place. Wow. So um, that's a big um, uh, procedure that uh, I, tend, I tell my patients not to ignore, especially if they've had a history or, um, of, of an ankle sprain, whether it's uh, in a recent setting or, or, or a long time or, or, if the, or if this occurred many years ago. This segment of the show is called Stat Chat. Stat meaning right now and chat meaning a series of questions asked pretty quickly. You have one minute and 30 seconds to answer as many of these questions as you can. If you get through all of them in the allotted time, you will receive a gift from one of our sponsors. Is that right? Yeah, how about that? Right Pretty on. good? Pressure's on. You game? I'm game. Matt, start the clock. Where's Matt? Matt, start the clock. Favorite color? Red. Favorite car? Aston Martin. What year? 1980. Favorite movie? Gattaca. Do you call it soccer or football? Footy. NASCAR or Formula One? Formula One. Mm. If you could be any pro driver in any era, in Senna. who would it be? Who? In Senna. Who's he? Arguably the best Formula One driver of all time. Gotcha. Died in 1994. Last thing you paid for in cash? Pizza. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Neither. Do you call it soda or pop? Being in New England for a while. Fizzy. Fizzy. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? Switzerland. If you could talk to anyone, alive or dead, who would it be? Anyone. Anyone. You talk to anyone, alive or dead, who would it be? Let's say Muhammad Ali. If you weren't a doctor, you would be? An astronaut. Congratulations, you finished it. Uh, cheers. I think he finished it on time. So the last segment we have for you is called Before You Go. And Before You Go is a chance for you to give a tip to patients that might be watching this show. Just one tip that'll help them be better prepared when they come see you. Not to wait. Definitely, the worst case scenario is that it's going to be some time for a for medical consult. But the idea is not to make a bad situation worse. Yeah, so like when you hear people say, um, it'll go away. Ah, I'm in a little pain. It'll go away. Don't wait. Absolutely not. Go and, see and someone. Unfortunately, I inherit a lot of individuals who've, who've made that comment, made that statement in, in, in weeks, months, or years prior. Um, and they're, 
they ended up in a situation that requires a lot more attention than they should have needed in the first place. That's good. That's good sound advice. Dr. Akbar, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. As always, please do your homework when choosing a doctor. These interviews should be just one of the many things you watch and read before making a final decision on who you pick to be the doctor.